Well, let's capture then the the, the vibrant um, essence of the Valley of Far State Park here, in Nevada, through through watercolor. And I think there's going to be a few objectives in this painting, a few things to to focus on. Um, what first of all struck me was the color. <laughs> Look at these lovely um, various shades of red in the rocks. You know, the more you look, it's red, pink, yellow, all sorts of things going on, but reds and ochres, um, lovely colors. So let's try and explore that. And the this sort of silvery gray, maybe a light, maybe a very cool light green foliage, possibly um, this foliage at certain times of the year might be a little bit greener than this, but this is great. I think it's quite a nice contrast with the with the rinders of the rock. So color, depth. We've got a succession of rock formations going down this um, valley uh, bed here to the more distant hills. It looks to me like there's a very distant one there. Then we've got this one. Just think of these as shapes. One there, then one here, one there and then nearest to us this one here but look at their their values we've got a succession of shapes and also uh these mounds of foliage as well the way that they're kind of overlapped and they take on take us on a little journey um smaller ones going into the distance so depth composition now this is where i i was erroneously talking on pat chat one of our regular monthly get togethers on Zoom, I threw in the idea of introducing that yucca in there, but quite inappropriate. And other people have come up with suggestions since then. Um, riders on horseback, uh, maybe uh, some sort of uh, scrubby, scrubby tree a little bit higher, um, uh, cactus plant maybe. Uh, there's the tree of Joshua. Joshua tree, I'm not sure what, what the correct botanical, what the correct botanical name might be, a yucca like tree, short of stout of leaves. Um, you may think of other things that you might want to include in that space. Me, I'm going to, well, this bush here, uh, it doesn't do it for me here. I think that one, if we had a larger bush over here, this is my thinking, a larger bush over here, maybe in some way that's going to balance things over on that right hand side that's my plan anyway and we've got a bit of shadow in the bottom left hand corner maybe if we have that big silvery bush there uh, maybe it's sort of casting that shadow all right so play around with play around with different term um, composition texture look at the texture of those rocks i i'm not sure exactly what rocks these are whether they're limestone or sandstone but to me they look like they've been eroded and wind erosion, I guess, not rain, wind erosion over the years. And they've got these sort of smooth forms and these cracks and holes you could probably put your put your fist into, these dark, dark marks there as well. Let's try and get that sort of pot marked um, feeling to the to the rock. And also, um, have you seen there's a sort of little bit of a diagonal um, pattern going on? There's like a scratching here going across, you know, going across there. Um, and then here on this, this second rock, there's those kind of diagonals like that, repeated there, repeated there, repeated there. Um, yeah, let's try and get let's try and get a feeling for a little bit of the texture of those rocks. Uh, another thing that attracted me to the scene, the light. The the um, the, the 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 range of contrast we've got it's quite dark in there quite dark there dark underneath some of these bushes as well lots of light um, with the light coming from the left I get I, I would think this is evening light maybe um, late in the day I'm guessing um, but uh, we've got the light hitting the sort of almost uh, vertical face of these rocks that's quite nice um, and then the darkness behind it, mixture of edges there as well. There's, there's loads of things we can uh, that we can focus on here. Um, brush, brush marks, brush strokes. We we um, 
in, in one of the last Project X's I introduced, I threw in there, um, how can you do a painting in as few a brush strokes as possible? Try and do a small size painting in 50 strokes or less. And a lot of you had a really good go at that and did really well. Uh, maybe we could try and do something like this on this one. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna to be too successful. Um, don't please don't start counting how many brush <laughs> how many brush strokes I do because I'll fail miserably. But maybe maybe we're trying to get loose, we could focus on that as well. And um, you know, you know my particular style. If you want to interpret this in your own way, I know a few of you last month did line and wash. If you want to do that for this one, no problem whatsoever. As long as in some way it involves a little bit of watercolour, I'm not too bothered. And uh, it'd be nice to see everyone's individual interpretation of this scene. And finally, um, for those of you on the critique level on Patreon, you get to send me um, a photo of your painting and in return you get a personal video critique from me. More on that um, in my posting uh, on uh, on Patreon um, if you haven't um, done that before, if you're new, new to these uh, monthly projects. Right, let's get on with the materials. Saunders Waterford watercolour paper, 15 by 11. Uh, colours are from... My, my particular colours are from Jackman's Art Materials, Mark Jackman in the UK. I've got neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, aloes and crimson, cadmium red, lye red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, a few gouache ones along there. Lavender. I think that lavender might be good for those hills. That's my feeling anyway. Look at that sort of opaque-ish lavender feeling uh, for those hills. Maybe a little bit for some of these bushes as well, mixed with a bit of gouache, go a bit, go a bit opaque-ish on some of those. Um, Brush-wise, my brush at the moment, my go-to brush, Tintoretto, uh, um, Sintetico, uh, my, my, my Italian is rubbish, uh, Sintetico Vaggio Kazan, uh, so synthetic brush, mop brush, good point, good edge to it, uh, size six, um, series 1407. Maybe a little flat brush as well. Oops, a little flat brush as well. A little Raphael, half inch flat brush. Using that quite a bit at the moment. A small synthetic brush. This is a Skoda. I think it's a Skoda Perla. But um, there's no, most brands do a brush like that. And drawing with a drawing with a 2B, 3B pencil. All right. Are there any questions to uh does anyone have any questions before I make a start on the drawing? No, don't think there are. Right. Where to start this drawing? Now, the I think I need to start with the horizon, which is around right about there. It's pretty much, well, the dimensions of the photo are almost four by three. That matches pretty much my paper four by three. If some of you are working with a wider format, I would suggest that you imagine or Google this image, um, do a Google search. You might find there's a bit more landscape going that way over to the left and, you know, extend out the plane a little bit more, uh, but keeping these, these mountains on the right-hand side. Yeah, so really a light drawing to start with, to try and get in the outline of these rock formations and also an indication of the these mounds of foliage trying to get those right okay um and maybe a little bit of indication of some of the the shadows as well for me this is always the most difficult thing um, of the painting is is the drawing and certainly where to start drawing from i've got this blank piece of paper in front of me um so many things to to uh, so many areas where I could start drawing um, a particular rock formation, a focal point, left hand side. I'm right handed. I'm going to go um, from left to right. So let's get in um, my starting point, that horizon line, and I'm going to I'm going to draw fairly lightly. First of all, you may not see 
all of these lives that I'm doing. But um, I'll, I'll strengthen them up, all right, as we, as I get towards the end of the drawing stage, once I've got, so it's fairly um, um, level sort of top to this rock, a few jagged, but I'm just getting in the, the essence of the, um, the top of that rock and the base of the rock as well, sort of like that. Again, it goes up and down in places. More on that in a minute. Um, the background, the furthest rocks, which I said I thought was a bit sort of lavenderish, a little bit of a dip there. Um, almost to a halfway point. Now, these three successive rock formations getting taller um, over to the right overlapping with each other and for the middle one this furthest of the three something like that and then and then the second furthest one away, almost vertical face to it. Um, and going back to the previous one, getting a little bit of the base of the cliff, that rock formation. Um, back to number two. Be a little bit more precise with the outline of these rocks now and then and then our main rock that looks like it's had some severe bashing from the wind over i guess many centuries and a little sort of a, a peak there and it comes down to a little bit of a a trough and then slightly higher slightly higher peak to the right now this right hand one so there's a nice sort of curve comes down a little bit of a, a crack in the rock there um, shade in there and Roughly, it's a bit of a sort of like an elbow or a knee, something like that. There, um, the base of this rock so curves down gently uh, to the level uh, base of the of the ground, and ever so slightly comes down to the right. That is pretty much, um, you, let me just strengthen up some of these lines. I don't think you can see. You can make up these jagged shapes. And then background. And So three, two, one, number one, number one rock. We call this number one rock. Number two. And our right hand one here. All right, I'm fairly happy with those those um, rock formations. Now these mounds. Let's get back to the picture. These mounds. So as I said, gonna think about removing that one, but pretty much have these um, have this little bit of dirt here in the foreground. Um, have a mound here, but then the succession of mounds 
um, going into the distance. We'll we'll keep that. Uh, I'll, I'll probably start by drawing the nearest ones first, then these overlapping mounds going into the going into the distance. So let's just have a does need to be a, a perfect a perfect circle. Shadow come away from that. Um, then let's have these overlapping shapes. Another one there. And the ground is not perfectly level. It's sort of the, the dust seems to accumulate at the base of these bushes, I guess, where the wind, um, the, the sand is trapped uh, by the, the, the lower parts of these, these mounds and it sort of accumulates there. Uh, let's get in another one, maybe. Let's get another one, maybe. I've got to be careful here, not have a perfect sort of object right in that middle area. Um, maybe just a little bit bigger there. And have these, try and be as random as you can with the spacing of these, um, these mounds. Uh, let's get one, a medium sized one in there. So they sort of come into the base, the ground, and then the, let's say the ground sort of slopes away from them. A little bit like that. And then we, we just continue into the background. So. And one there, there. And so on. I'm not going to draw the furthest ones. I might um might just paint those in with a little bit of white gouache or something to on a darker background just to indicate those. Now um, in between these sort of silvery um, bushes, there are some more bronzy sort of bushes. Uh, I guess they've they've lost their leaves or something like that. Um, don't look at it too carefully because you're going to going to see too much detail. Unless that's your style, of course, you might want to really um, you know produce a a very accurate uh, depiction of, of the scene with all the vegetation. Um, but I think let's just review this. So I think that's about about it. Do I need a few more? Maybe a few more there. Uh, there are there are some taller different different types of vegetation um, on that left hand side. I'll just move it further back a bit just to balance things. Yes, so um, we'll see if this works. I did, I, did think about, I did think about that yucca. My idea was having, imagine that pencil was my, the, the trunk of the yucca and then the sort of explosion of foliage, um, albeit maybe fairly stressed uh, just there, but connecting the, the foreground, middle ground, background. That was my idea anyway. We'll not bother with that. We'll <laughs> we'll go with this. Um, yes, yeah, so quite quite a sort of alien landscape, really. I was, I've never been there, but to me, it um, it could almost be minus the vegetation. Just look at the rocks. Could it be something like Mars or something like that that we um, we might find if we ever get there? Oh, strewn across the ground, little chippings of little lightly coloured rocks that are catching the light. A tiny, tiny bit of shadow. 
I think the, the sun is fairly low in the sky. We've got these long shadows. Look at all these bounds of shadows. Dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, and so on. I think that's quite attractive, that between the bushes. Another way of connecting these bushes together. All right. Um, let's get in. That's going to be dark in there. Uh, that's going to be dark over there. Maybe a silver bush here. So we've got the darkness against that bush. Um, I don't think many bushes grow really close to the to the rocks. Maybe there's very little soil there. They're more out in the on the on the flat area. Right. I think that is it for the drawing. Fairly simple drawing. No fi no figures. No cars. Um, all natural stuff. Right. Are there any questions before I start painting? Um, and my my plan for the painting, light, of course, with watercolour, generally lighter values to darker values and top to bottom, left to right for me being right handed. So I'll start with the sky. The sky's not too, not too um, vivid, is it? It's quite light. A bit darker up there than down there. That's the light. That's almost white. It's almost white there. And then um, cover the whole scene. Uh, a little bit of undercoating for the um, rocks and then the silvery colour. And um, then once I've done the silvers, just going a little bit with the soil, really. Um, the soil is, is that sort of ochreish colour, but the rocks there, they are going to be, well, what would you think? Um, I don't, I think maybe a little bit of, I'll see how I get on, but a little bit of light red and that cabin orange. Um, Got to be careful. Don't want to make it too bright and too unreal, but that's, that's the plan anyway. Mop brush and let's just wet the sky first of all, so I can get in a, it's clear water mop brush. Let's get in a little bit of wetness in there just so that the wash is going to be really smooth in that sky area. All right, fairly even application of clear water there over the sky area. The color of the sky. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this lavender, a little bit of cerulean blue, um, or maybe a bit of cerulean blue and a tiny, tiny bit of aloes and crimson, possibly, um, just to warm it up a bit. Not too much, but cerulean blue, lavender, and then starting from the right hand side, let's get in that covering of the sky. Keep it fairly light at the horizon level. Looks like there's a few wispy clouds in the high altitude clouds in the source photo. A little bit stronger in that top right corner. There we go. Right, you might see a little bit of a glare on the screen when that when that dries there, it'll go matte. So. Uh, right, let's go on down a little bit further. Um, keep this bluish colour for those background hills. And we'll go over those a little bit more with the red when that's dry. But now let's start playing around with these. Just the base colour. Going to go in. 
a little bit more saturated with um, some stronger colors, but just a base color of light red. All right, I've got a light red here. Um, just something to cover up the paper, really. That's a bit of this cad orange. And this may end up being the very light parts of the of these hills, or these uh, cliff faces, sorry. Cadmium orange. Oops. Be careful with the mop brush. up to the edge of those rocks. Bring them on down to the ground. Okay, next. Next, um, a little bit of the valley floor, which is this sort of, what's well, a bronzy sort of a color. I need to go a little bit darker than that. But we'll start painting around some of these nearby, some of these nearby mounds. So just covering up some of the space between these mounds with this sort of soil color. Again, I might go in a bit deeper with this soil color. And then the ground coming towards us. Uh, perhaps a little bit on that side as well. Around that bush, around that right hand one. Adding in a little bit of Adelson Crimson Ultramarine Blue here just to get that kind of purplish colour to it. In fact, over on the right hand side, it is a bit more vivid. I guess it's catching a bit more light than here, is more in the shade, so go a bit cooler um, in here. And it's good to get in this sort of variation of. Um, variation of these these reds the bushes the bushes all right make sure my brush is clean still stick with the mop brush and something well a little bit of viridian green a little bit of viridian green maybe a little bit of white gouache 
and yeah, red and green. Oops, bit of red and green. And this green is, it kind of shows up more at the base, but then the tops are quite light. So that's one. Uh, light coming from the right. So leave the top left part of them quite bright. This white crash. So I'm going to have to work on connecting these shapes with the ground. That's going to come with the shadows. And the uh, sort of darker center of these bushes. There we go. They probably look like bright white blobs at the moment. Don't worry about any bleeding that's going on. That doesn't matter. Just leave it. Uh, yeah, I think that's um, that should be okay for that sort of first wash. As I say, trying to trying to cover the whole scene, apart from obviously the the light the lighter areas, which we will keep as white paper. Um, the sort of the slightly darker um, core of these bushes uh, with that bit of red and green. I went a bit more opaqueish with a tiny bit of white gouache or white paint in there to try and get that sort of silvery feel. Try and get a bit of a soft edge. These, the, the shadows are soft edge because of these, the spiny um, little twigs. Don't think these are leaves, um, but the spiny twigs there. And so many of them, they're quite dense. They're giving a sort of very soft edge to those to those bushes now we've got a few more to contend with in there have i got them all maybe a few here right and not perfect not perfect um circles well where i've got little bits of the paper um not painted they could be these little sort of stones that are catching the light a few random ones there um all over the place maybe i could have had a few more in there uh, but they could be useful don't don't paint over the whole area leave the options open right let this dry a little bit and it is drying quite nicely already so i will go in with the background hills and work my way so that one first then that one then this one then this one then this one okay so in that sort of direction and then i've got to after i've done that the plan will be to fill in this middle ground then the uh, darker cores of these bushes with their shadows coming out to the right. Then go in with some darks for the, or actually I might do the shadows of the, of these, um, the darker shadows um, as I do these rocks. But the, the latter stage will be trying to get in some of those little crevices, little, little details into those rocks um, where they've got little depressions and cracks. 
Okay then, so background hills, this background hill one, first of all, which I thought looked quite cool, like an opaque-ish lavender in a way. Um, we want to try and get the feeling of depth and distance as well. I really have no idea how far away they are. Um, maybe a kilometer or two, perhaps. Um, so let's go in fairly cool. My lavender, tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna, tiny bit lavender, burnt sienna. Lavender. Let's see. Um, let's see what that gives us. And then also trying to get in the the sense of that the direction of those rocks. This is the sort of diagonal pattern. So maybe this isn't as dark as the photograph. Don't want to go too dark. Depression in the middle. And then over to the right hand side. up to our first real red rock. There, first one done. Next, this one. This is gonna be slightly warmer, darker, so let's ping, pick up some of my light red. Bit of ultramarine blue. Bit of, again, a bit of that lavender. And there's a sort of lighter, it's a lighter bit to the rocks there, just where they're catching the light. And just remove one of the brushes from in there. That's better. So a little bit darker, vulturing blue, but sienna for the Tops of the rocks. Ultra in blue, burnt sienna. We've got a, a vertical face to the cliff, and then that sort of 45 degree angle. Altering blue, burnt sienna. Maybe a bit of a light red. Altering blue, burnt sienna. And we're 
Gradually going to the right. Well, I think we could go a little bit darker. That's going to create a bit of contrast with the um, that middle red cliff. The so ultra blue burnt sienna and be very careful going up to those more distant. Now this is thicker paint, that's thinner, this is thicker, so it, it shouldn't bleed into. Might get a bit of a soft edge here and there. Doesn't matter, a bit of light hitting that upright peak. Uh, I read ultra in blue. Need to be quite solid with the um, quite solid with the covering. So while this is still damp, I can I can go in with well a bit of cobalt blue, put it down a bit, and up the top of the little peaks here, get them a little bit darker, perhaps a bit more on the base. There we go. Next one, this one next. We've got to get stronger with the color, more saturated, um, warmer as well. So I will mix. Let's keep my cools there, let's keep my warms here. So warmer, cooler, cooler, mix is there, warmer here. Uh, light red. And these rocks there, or this one here, it's, I think it's a little bit cooler towards the base. Similar to that more distant one. Yeah. So reserve my more intense colors for the right hand side. Let's put a little bit of red in this. Little bit of ultra in blue for the very top of the uh, rock and this right hand side that's going to contrast with the going to contrast with the next rock along. So a little bit cooler to the base. My cooler mix here, cobalt blue, ultra in blue. And a 
into that right corner. A little bit of that cobalt blue in there. Right, there's a bit of glare on the, um, I can see there's a bit of glare on the uh, display, so that, that will that will go away eventually. Next one along then, more intense. Cadmium orange, light red. Might soften up that line later on in that line with a little brush, but get in that brightness on the left hand side first. So I'm a lot thicker now, this, um, this mixture. Now in here, I reckon is the darkest dark. So let's go ultra blue, neutral tint. Something quite dark, quite thick, not too much, not too much water on my brush, neutral tint. Altering blue. And then a little bit of a lighter red to the bottom. Next one along, our last one. Uh, so it's actually a little bit light. There's more light hitting this one. So cadmium orange. Be very careful here not to touch that. Got a bit more vertical and it goes around. Be very careful up against that area. Drag the brush down. Bit of shadow on the right hand side. Colors in crimson, ultra in blue. Do that shadow and it's all too wet up there so leave that for a second uh the middle ground i'm going to go in a little bit darker in this middle ground with with some of this darker foliage to me it looks like a some greens in there reds bronzes a little bit of a like a little shard of light 
going through that very middle area there. Maybe with bits of lighter catching the tops of bushes there. So um, let me think. Let's just mix up a little. I've got a quinacridone gold down here. Perhaps that might just serve to just trying to think of the, the values over here as well. Quinacridone gold. A little bit of red and green as well. There's that bit of light. Quinacrid and gold, red and green. Just with the brush marks, just trying to create the sense of little bits of vegetation in there, rocks, whatever. Now we're coming up to Coming up to the base of these rocks on this side. With my finger, I'm just lifting off a little bit of the paint and creating some softer edges. Or I could, with my smaller synthetic brush, now start to just get some softer edges in places. So, for example, um, just on the leading edge of some of these darker cracks in the rock. So soft brush, little bit of moisture on the brush, just work away at that edge. Soften it up a bit. Likewise, if you think you've gone a bit too dark in some of these rocks, you can just Use that brush. Um, we've got that diagonal, remember this diagonal theme going on. The, these furthest rocks do have a little bit of 
darkness in them. Not too much. I want to get really, really not too dark with those background hills. Right, soften up, soften up um, this edge here. So I'm dipping my brush in my clear water. I've got a sponge nearby as well. So in the water, a quick one, two on the old sponge. And hopefully get, now that's, that's a bit of a hard edge there, soft up there. Um, need to have a bit more shadow behind these little these little rocky bits there there are some Darker little splodges of something in this middle area here. Get the photo. Do you see just a on the top part of that darker bit? There's this this little shadow. It's definitely definitely a little bit darker in there. So. Ocean blue, fairly thick. Um, right, wait till this is dry, dry, that's still quite damp for me. And there needs to be attention to detail. <laughs> this, there's so we got the the rock here in in shade, and then a bit of a shadow being cast over this rock. Do you see a slightly lighter value with a hard edge? Can't do that until that's all dry there. So meanwhile, we'll do the bushes. Let me just see if there's any questions. No, okay, right, bushes. Dark in the middle, then we've got that shadow going across. Um, I'm going to use my little flat brush for the darker bits within the middle of these silver bushes. Let's just see if this works. So small flat brush, bit more of this viridian stuff, bit in green, and This darker stuff up here. So not too much water on the brush, and then just um, if I can clearly do this, just from the bottom of the bush, just lightly go up. I see that's too wet. That just go up a little bit to create that. Darker, darker core. And do another one there. This one.
gradually trying to get the shape of these these shadows but they do need to be a soft top to them so if i think i've gone a bit too hard and with this flat brush it's giving you a little sort of little strand little with the with the actual mark of the um brush that is dry gives you these a little bit more expressive my brush marks on this one and then um darker at the base a bit of altering blue but sienna in there I really don't know what these plants are, but they're they obviously um, quite tough to survive in this environment. Let's go back to this Viridian Green. Yeah, quite tough to survive there. Okay, now back to the mop brush, shadows in between hot nice horizontal sun low in the sky, um, these long thin shadows. Um, to me they're like a sort of violet or purple. So oops, let's get let's get some Altering blue, alas and crimson, and perhaps a bit lighter with the shadows in the distance. Uh, coming down, let's gradually come closer towards me. Connect with the bushes. So it's altering blue, uh, alloys and crimson. A bit redder, a bit of cadmium red.
and let's get some foreground shadows in now. Hopefully the base of your your mounds are still damp, so we're getting in a bit of blending of the colours. Just that something coming in from the something coming in from the left. Don't know what. And then these little little stones catching the light. A bit of shadow behind there's a little bit of white there, little shadow behind it. I need to um, connect these different shadows with the plants a little bit more. You end up with dirty fingers in this. It's all worth it. There we go. Right, I think I've got to, well, maybe a little bit more detail to some vegetation um, in there, but essentially that that is it, I reckon. Uh, this, these rocks need to be, yeah, I think they're drying a bit better now. Uh, let's get in, I'll stick with the, Stick with a mop brush here and some darker shadows. So I've got fairly thick paint here, it's thick red. Remember these diagonals. Bit of neutral tint. It's quite dark in there. Uh, back up here. And I'm now on the detail stage of these rocks. There's quite a few cracks sort of meandering down. This is getting a little bit like our Stillwater Cove project, isn't it? Um, get a bit of darker. The warm, a warmer dark down in there. And 
just just try and get the these little sort of pop marks just the essence need to go that shadow in there um oh should we have some little stones you could you could do a little bit of splattering i guess for for this just what i got this brush remember the the darkness in the in the uh Shadows as well. So, uh, no, dry brush. These distant hills here. Try and get in some of these these diagonal marks. Quite distinctive, I think, of the air of these bands and horizontal bands and wavy bands. Right, check the edge of my brush. Then some racks in this one. And a few of those diagonal diagonal marks uh, a few more for this one Ah, what am I doing? Right, so more details for these rocks here on the right.
think we're nearly there with the rocks. This is really thin. I use a wrong brush. I use a a rigger brush. Um, these thin little, almost like some something sort of gouged out um, the rock there. Quite light. My little lemon lemons and brush. Now, with these lines, we need to suggest the contour of the. Of the do one first of all. Just a few, and then they go a bit darker in there. Um, a little bit of just a little bit of purple. Sorry, lavender, lavender for some of these cliffs. Just really in places, just introducing a little subtle coolness to um, to the shadow. Uh, Rit, um, shall I, let's use my, my rigger brush here and get in some lighter, some lighter little, some of these little, um, put my mop brush down, some of these lighter little strands here, just a few, not overdo it. Uh, so start with so my thin lemons and rigger brush and just needs to be just the right consistency, not too dry, not too wet. Uh, maybe we can have something in there that show up against the the darkness of the Of course, this nearby bush, we can just suggest a little bit of spikiness to that bush. Perhaps of just a few more. Get a good edge to the uh, brush. Get a fine line. A few more random. Around these white little white lines, a few little rocks and things with this brush. Show up a bit more in the in the shade, don't they? Hmm. 
where I put in those dark marks, they could be a little bit of light against those, go the opposite way to the the lighter marks I left when I didn't paint the um all the paper. Right, a few darker. So these darker, sort of very thorny, spiny uh, bushes, one there, one there. Um, I was gonna I drew one in kind of there. Um quinacrodone gold and doesn't really show up at all, does it? Uh, neutral tint. Neutral tint, burnt umber. Um, maybe here. Oh, it's too dark. But it's here now. Try and get a thin, thin line. Likewise, we can just be, let's say, could have done the, the old splattering technique. You might, if you're doing splattering, you might want to have a piece of paper uh, just protecting some of your work. Just serves to create a bit of extra dimension to the the surface here. Have all of these little these little marks here, different size, go around them. And then get over the edge of the paper as well was a good idea. Don't want a nasty nasty sort of boundary edge around. Um okay, uh small small flat round. Let's get in get in some very small, let's see how small I can get it. Um small little round small little mounds of this foliage going into the distance right um small flat brush little bit of little bit of white gouache tiny tiny bit of viridian green this has got to be quite thick not too wet let's just see how we can go with this um, and really i'm just sort of getting in the top of the bushes where it's catching the light not a complete not a complete circle. That needs to be drier. Better. Just a few, don't make it too fussy. Don't go too much into this darker area.
Just do a few more, and then I think we are done. Maybe some more coming in from the left. There we are. Um, it might need to be just a tiny bit of shadow behind these bushes. Just a little bit. Your brush. Dry. Brush marks just a tiny bit, not too dark. Yes, nothing danger putting too much detail in. Uh, back to just spotted a few more. Mine's in there. We're going to put the um the soft shadow in down that side there. Mop brush and a bit of cobalt blue. And then, so it starts about there, a bit too dark. Just I'm lightly glazing over this rock here. It gets down to the bottom. Meets some foliage, just peters out. Yes, could get a bit darker in there. Um a bit of can I get a little bit of lightness into these rocks? A bit of this white gouache, a bit of light red. This could be pretty dangerous, this. Um, by overdoing it, let's just try a little, a little area first. Yeah, orange, white gouache. Not ideal, but just served us to get a bit more, a bit more. You need to go lighter. A bit lighter there.
Yes, not ideal, but it should it should be all right. Uh, right, I think I think I'm actually done now. Says he's still mucking about. Um, yeah, so let's let's just have a quick review. Then I'll I'll do us do a, a catch up with you, uh, Patreon people. Um, afterwards, so yeah, um, Valley Valley of Fire State Park, I believe, Nevada. Um, thanks very much to one of our members to uh, provide the source photo, and yeah, so a number of objectors here trying to um, capture the colour of those rocks. Let's push the colour a little bit. I might have <laughs> um, certainly got the fire there, I think, um, but try and push the colour there. Uh, of the the rocks and the vegetation um, trying to get the sense of depth with the succession the overlapping of these objects going down the scene and the the value of these as well the coolness of those distant those distant um, cliffs rocks mountains trying to think about composition as well um, it was pretty it's a pretty good photo from a from a composition point of view but I think obviously with being artists, we can move things around. So um, trying to get some of this foliage um, to, to balance up on the left-hand side, balance up the, the dominance of those rocks on the right. Trying to get the texture of the rocks as well. Edges, hard edges, soft, hard, soft edge there. All right, think about those edges. And, um, you know, your brushwork using using... You know, using a brush, um, I think I went way over the 50 brush marks. I was probably about more, I don't know, would you guess, 500 brush marks, maybe even more. Um, but anyway, who cares? So, um, yeah, and I'd be, be really um, interested to see your different interpretation of those Patreon people, your interpretation of the scene, and the way different techniques that you might deploy in there as well. So uh, I'll catch up with you on the next one on our next project.